And uh, without further ado, we'll get started. My name is David Cobb. I work in the Faculty Success Center. Um, as you may know, there's really just uh, two employees um, in the Faculty Success Center, Center, myself and my colleague Molly Pfaff, and then our supervisor, Dale Fredericks, who kind of oversees things. But it's Molly and I who uh, are kind of the boots on the ground individuals helping you day to day. Um, and while Molly and I will, of course, continue to uh, support you as best we can in your use of Canvas and other technologies in the classroom, uh, still there are only two of us and, you know, a few hundred, I don't know, 300 plus uh, instructors at KVCC. So while we do our best to respond to your questions and issues in a timely manner, sometimes you're going to encounter a situation where you need um, immediate assistance and we're just not going to be able to provide that. So I'd like to show you some resources and some methods that you can uh, try to help yourself and um, solve a lot of your own problems um, without having to rely on someone else uh, to assist you. So I'd like to get started by talking about some resources that are available to students. A lot of instructors um, are the first point of contact for student issues when it comes to technology and Canvas uh, or Moodle, but now Canvas. And um, while there are processes in place to help students, um, if you're able to, as that first point of contact, if you're able to solve the student's problem quickly, uh, it's going to really help the students out, and it'll probably help you out as well. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to, uh, first tool I'd like to mention is Office 365. Um, a lot of classes will make use of the software included with Microsoft Office 365, such software as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and other applications like that. Uh, the good news is that uh, the college KVCC has Office 365 licenses for students. So all students would need to do in order to obtain 365 is to email the IT department, which is just it at kvcc.edu. Uh, and that information will be in my notes that I uh, email everyone um, later on today. And uh, the students just email IT, let them know they're trying to obtain Office 365, and then IT takes care of that with the students. And then the students will have uh, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and all those other useful applications. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, specific to distance education classes. As uh, I'm sure you're all aware, we have transitioned uh, many classes that were traditionally on campus for the fall semester into uh, distance uh, classes instead because of all the uh, COVID issues. And uh, there's some technology that staff and students may not have ever had need for before uh, that they need for the fall semester and really the summer semester as well. Um, one such example are webcams and uh, while I am definitely not a financial aid uh, expert in any way, um, I do believe that um, some students will be able to use financial aid to obtain things like web webcams and other technology tools from the bookstore. Um, the bookstore, you know, has taken into consideration what's going on with the summer and fall semesters and maybe, you know, future semesters as well. And they've um, started stocking some technology that they may not have had much of, if, at, if you know, any at all of in the past um, so that students can obtain it with their financial aid. Because even though, you know, a basic webcam isn't that expensive, um, $25 to you or I, uh, who are probably um, at least part-time, if not full-time employed individuals, um, doesn't seem like a lot of money, but $25 to a student can be very significant. So if they can get it with their financial aid rather than pay out of pocket, uh, that can be very useful for them. Uh, the next important uh, resource available to students regarding Canvas is the uh, Canvas Student Orientation course. Um, this is called, well, so you probably are aware that students had to uh, complete a Moodle orientation course back when we were primarily using Moodle. Well, we have a similar course 
products, but um, created for Canvas. It's called Passport to Canvas, and all students are being enrolled in it. So as students register for classes, they will also be um, auto-enrolled into the Passport for Canvas course. And um, students are informed that they're required to take the Passport to Canvas course uh, and complete the orientation before they can proceed to their Canvas courses, uh, which is great in theory. However, right now, technologically, we're not able to uh, enforce that. Um, so with Moodle, um, the different computer systems would talk to each other and Moodle could say to a student, hey, you haven't completed your orientation, so you can't access this course. Right now, we can't get that to work with Canvas. Uh, so while we are telling students they need to pass the orientation course, if they didn't do so and they clicked on a Canvas course, they would be able to access it. Um, so, you know, while we strongly recommend that they complete the orientation, there's not much we can do to uh, enforce that right now. We are hoping to um, fix that going forward, but um, when that will uh, be fixed, I'm not sure. David? Yes. Is there an also a uh, teacher orientation course? Yes, there is. And I will talk about that uh, later on in the presentation. Good question. Okay. So we also have a help menu on Canvas. And there are um, different uh, links that will be useful for students on the help menu. And I'll show you what some of those are. There we go. All right. So on uh, the uh, what's called the global navigation menu, which is the list of uh, links or icons on the left hand side of Canvas. Um, one of the options is help. Can you all see my Canvas screen right now? Is, is everyone able to see uh, my Canvas dashboard currently? I can see it, Dave. Okay, yeah. perfect, thank yeah, you. I see it. So one of the links is help. And when I click on that, there are links here that are for faculty and some that are for students. And right now I'll cover the ones that are for students. I'll cover the ones that are for faculty uh, later on in the presentation. Um, so the first uh, link that is useful for students is uh, the Passport to Canvas Student Canvas Orientation course. So if a student is confused about how to access this, um, it should show up as a course tile in their dashboard, like these different courses are for me. But if for some reason it's not showing up for them, all they would need to do is click on this link and it would take them to that um, orientation course. And it's a self-enrolled course. So as long as they have the link to the course, um, they will be added to it. So all they would need to do is to click on this and then they could get uh, working in the class. Uh, the next link I want to talk about is ask your ins instructor a question. This is a way for students to message their instructors. So it uses the Canvas inbox function, where if I click on this, I can choose uh, whichever course I'm enrolled in that I want to uh, communicate with the uh, faculty. Obviously, the students won't have nearly as many courses as I do. Um, and then when they click on it, they can compose their message and send the message. And then the instructor would receive that message in their Canvas inbox you would just see like a number one to show that you have a new message. And uh, students can use the, uh, the link from help to do that, or they can simply go within a course and message the instructor from within a course. Either way, it accomplishes the same thing. Um, it's just one, one way to do it is from the, the help menu. David, can I ask a question? Certainly. Um, so are we keeping Zimbra? You just mentioned Canvas Inbox. Are we going to have a different inbox in the future? So Canvas Inbox is just for Canvas. Um, it is not a KVCC-wide um, email uh, application. It only works within Canvas. Well, that's not true. I mean, I think you can probably... Actually, I don't know if you can message someone outside of Canvas or not, to be honest with you. I've never tried. So are we be, should we be checking Canvas email and Zimbra all the time? Yes, uh, because students may choose to contact you through Canvas Inbox. OK, and where is the Canvas Inbox? Is it on this navigation menu? Yep. Oh, um, oh, there it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. And so it operates just the same way as any other email system. You'll have messages here. Uh, you'll be able to compose messages. Um, you select a course and then you can select students. You can either email course-wide or to specific students. You give it a subject like you would any email. You compose your email and then you send. And the students can do the same thing. Um, what you can do is if you don't want to um, spend too much time going in between your Zimbra and your inbox, is you can inform students of the way you prefer they contact you. You can say, you know, don't use Canvas inbox use my, uh, you know, Zimbra email instead. They may still, you may still find some students using the inbox because um, not everybody reads, um, but that's one way to try to minimize it. Yeah, thank you. Of course. The next link is a report a problem to IT. If Canvas is misbehaving and not performing the things that it uh, is designed to, then both instructors and students can uh, submit a help ticket. The tickets uh, initially go to either KVCC IT or the Faculty Success Center. So the way we divide it right now is that um, instructor tickets go to Molly and myself, and then student tickets go to the IT department. Uh, both the IT department as well as Molly and myself uh, have the ability to elevate tickets to um, Canvas support. So if it's an issue that none of us on KVCC campus can resolve, then we can send it off to the Canvas folks themselves and ask for their assistance in resolving it. Uh, generally, for most things, it's something that either IT or the FSC can help, but we do occasionally elevate things. Um, the next link for students is Ask a Librarian. This is where they can chat online with a librarian in a you know, chat box like we have for the Zoom where they type back and forth um, and librarians can help them in the various uh, ways that librarians help students, which is um, you know, a lot more ways than a lot of students are aware of. And that is pretty much the help bar for students. I will talk about the uh, help menu for instructors later on. So don't worry about some of these links that I skipped over, I will cover them. Um, but that's the different ways that the help menu can help uh, students. David, uh, one quick question going back. Uh, instructor tickets go to who? Instructor tickets will go to Molly and myself, okay. um, the Faculty Success Center. Thank and you. then if it's something that we can't fix, uh, we'll send it off to the Canvas support people um, right. through the Canvas company and structure. And student tickets go to IT. Correct, yep. Thank you. Of course. The next thing I want to cover is um, Canvas guides. So hopefully you're all aware by now that Canvas has developed guides on how to use pretty much everything within Canvas. Um, and they have guides for both students and faculty. I'll cover the student guides quickly and just show you um, on this page, stand, uh, Canvas student guide table of contents. And you can see the various um, areas in which there are guides. And then um, these are all links to individual guides. So you can see as I scroll through that there are a lot of guides for a lot of different topic areas. Um, it's probably quicker if a student just finds a Canvas guide and helps themselves than waiting for IT to respond to a ticket. If it's not something that's you know wrong with Canvas, if it's just they don't know how to do something, um, they can probably find an answer in one of all these guides. Um, they're of course always welcome to contact IT if they'd rather not, but if they just want to help themselves because it's quicker or they just want to learn, they're more than welcome to use the Canvas guides. Uh, they can reach the guides from the help menu or they can simply search Canvas student guides in like a, a Google search and um, a page will come up which will probably take them to this table of contents and then they can find all the different guides. If I were an instructor, I would probably, you know, you're gonna be the first line of contact. So if a student says they don't know how to do something in Canvas, they're probably gonna go to you first, most likely. Um, if you know how to do it, please feel free to answer them. 
If you don't know how to do it, you're welcome to uh, refer them to the student guides, or you can use the student guides yourself to figure it out and then give them the answers, or you can recommend the students submit a help ticket and then IT will get back to them. Um, I have no idea how quickly IT is getting back to students. It might be same day, it might be a couple of days, it might be several days. I really don't know if it's something that the student wants to solve right away um, and you don't know how to do it yourself, then probably referring them to the student guide is the best uh, avenue to resolve the issue uh, quickest. Let's go back to my presentation. The last thing I want to talk about is called whatismybrowser.com. And whatismybrowser.com is a website that um, browser .com can give you information about the web browser that you're using. So a uh, web browser is, you know, Google Chrome, uh, Firefox, maybe Microsoft um, Edge or Explorer. Um, it's what you use to um, interact with the internet. And um, the reason that this is a useful website is that for most computer problems, they generally fall into one of two categories, either a hardware issue or a software issue. So a hardware issue is something like a, a computer doesn't have enough uh, memory to run an application. Um, whereas a software issue is something um, where a student's version of Windows is out of date, and because it's out of date, that's why it can't run the software. Um, alongside software being out of date, one very common problem uh, that students and faculty face is that their web browser is out of date. If your web browser is too far out of date, you might encounter things online that you cannot do um, that would otherwise be um, uh, easy to do if you had an up-to-date browser. So if you go to whatismybrowser.com, which is the window I'm on now, it shows me that I have Chrome 84 and I'm using Windows 10 and it tells me that this is uh, an up-to-date browser. And then it does give me some additional information about my browser settings that might be useful. Um, a lot of this is going to be information that you don't really need to look at. Um, the most important thing is probably this, is your browser up to date? If your browser is not up to date, I think my Firefox actually isn't up to date, so let me take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so my Firefox is out of date, and it tells me it's out of date, and then it gives me a link to click on, and it should uh, take me to a page that tells me how to update my Firefox so I can get this updated uh, and not run into trouble. So just a handy website that uh, students might find useful and faculty might find useful as well if you're running into issues of websites not working with your web browser. David? Yes. David, I saw many more selections in the uh, uh, Canvas student guide than I did in the Canvas instructor guide, but maybe I was not seeing everything there. The, the list of uh, topics was very lengthy for the student and for the for the instructor it was uh, somewhat less. Uh, that's possible. I will be covering the instructor guide later on. So we'll have a good look at that okay. and see um, if it looks significantly shorter than the student guide or if you're maybe on a different web page. Right. And, and one final thing. Um, in talking with one of the IT guys, I know uh, he didn't come out and blatantly say it, but he said uh, use Chrome rather than Firefox. So, and I have both on my computer, so I've been sticking with Chrome all along. I think that Chrome works better with Canvas. Uh, Firefox is a fine browser and will work, you know, most of the time for most of the things that you want to do. Um, but I do believe that Canvas is on better terms with Google Chrome. So uh, speaking of Google, uh, Google is your best friend. Google is your best friend when it comes to Canvas and when it comes to most things that you uh, don't know how to do. 
Uh, I have uh, taught myself how to do all sorts of things. Uh, when I bought my first house, I taught myself how to do plumbing work, how to do electrical work, how to do things with my car, uh, all by watching experts uh, share their YouTube videos on how to do these things. Um, you're going to be hard pressed to have a question that someone hasn't already uh, asked the internet and the internet has responded to. Uh, so Google is your best friend. It is definitely going to be faster uh, than waiting for the FSC to help you. While um, I and Molly do our best to respond as quickly as we can, sometimes it can take a couple of days or even longer before we can respond to you. Um, if it's you know an issue that you don't mind waiting for a resolution, then that's fine. But if it's something that is pressing and needs to be handled right away, feel free to uh, do some Google searches to uh, try to try to find a solution to your issue. Um, I would say between Canvas guides and uh, Google searches, you're going to be able to solve most of your Canvas issues on your own if you um, have the time to do so and uh, the drive to do so. Um, between those two tools, it, it'll, it'll cover pretty much everything. Um, in addition to helping with Canvas, Google uh, can help you solve you know, all manner of technological issues. If you're using, you know, Microsoft Excel to create some sort of spreadsheet and you don't know how to use the sum function to do, uh, you know, uh, a sum of uh, various numbers, um, just Google sum Excel how to and you'll find a wealth of websites that tell you how to do that. So um, Google can answer a lot of your questions in a lot of areas and I definitely recommend that you uh, you make use of it. Um, and what I want to do is kind of help you make better use of it, how to uh, search more efficiently uh, so that you get websites that really answer your questions. Because that is one flaw of um, Googling um, your questions is because there are so many websites out there, sometimes Google will bring results with websites or web pages that aren't really applicable to what you're trying to find. Um, and I want to show you how to um, uh, improve your searches so that you narrow down your results to be uh, the most applicable web pages so that you don't waste time looking through um, the chaff. So one example is to use quotation marks in your search. Um, quotation marks are useful when you want to search an exact, an exact combination of words. So for example, if you were to search um, puppy dog sweaters, Google would look for each individual word, uh, puppy, dogs, and sweaters, and bring results that match any of those individual words. Whereas if you put the term puppy dog sweaters in uh, quotations, it is only going to bring back websites that have that uh, exact phrase puppy dog sweaters. And if you're looking for, you know, um, a website that sells puppy dog sweaters, that may bring back better results than searching just puppy dog sweaters without the quotations, which will bring back websites about dogs, websites about human sweaters, websites about um, puppies. Um, and you'll have to search through it a lot more. So uh, quotation marks are your friend if you want to search for an exact uh, phrase. Another uh, search tip is to um, try not to use full sentences when you do your searching. Um, and definitely don't use multiple sentences. Instead of searching, for example, how do I find which of my students have submitted a late assignment in my Canvas course, instead you should use key terms. So you could search instead, find late assignments, student campus. Um, the way that the search engine looks, it really looks more for terms and it doesn't care about really sentences at all. Um, if you give it too much information, it may not know what the heck to do. Um, so just a few key terms will usually be more beneficial than uh, long sentences when you're doing your searching. And then lastly, for um, 
search tips, uh, especially in regards to Canvas, is that you want to try to match the terminology that Canvas uses. So for example, um, Canvas uses the term assignment instead of homework. So if you are trying to find some information about how to set you know, the deadline date for a homework assignment, um, when you do your Google search, use the term assignment rather than homework uh, because that's you know, what Canvas is using in its documentation. So try to match terminology. And, and while I say that, you know, if you search Canvas homework, you know, um, end date settings, that will probably take you to where you need to go. Google's pretty good about those kind of things. Um, but if you want to be safe and try to, you know, narrow down the results to exactly what you're hoping to find, uh, the making use of these different tips can help you do that. So another issue that you should be aware of um, when you're searching for solutions to your problems is the date of the source material. Um, when you find a helpful article, you wanna check and see when it was created or last updated. The reason that that is important, especially when it comes to technology issues, is that technology is constantly updating and changing. And while many times, you know, an update, especially in Canvas is minor, uh, sometimes, you know, the updates or changes are major. And if your, you know, your resource that you're consulting is more than a couple of years old, then there's a strong chance that at least some of the content in that resource is out of date and really doesn't apply any longer and will be um, not, you know, unhelpful. So you want to make sure that you keep an eye out on the date of your resource that you're using. And then finally, I want to talk about the Canvas community. Um, so the Canvas guides are going to solve a lot of your issues but occasionally you're gonna have a question and be unable to find a guide that provides an answer. And this is where you can turn to the Canvas community. The community is made up of Canvas users, including instructors and administrators of Canvas um, from across the globe. And it's a place where users can ask each other questions. And then um, basically you, you would log into the Canvas community, you pose a question, you, you know, give your, um, your case scenario and what your question is and then other canvas users would uh, propose answers to your question and uh, usually you know the users are pretty quick and very helpful and uh, I know I've consulted the um, the community multiple times when trying to find answers uh, to instructor questions that I couldn't figure out on my own and uh, I'm sure that Molly has as well I'll show you uh, an example page of uh, a Canvas community post. So this is uh, an example of the Canvas community post. It has the title up top, so rubric option to subtract points for late work. And then it has uh, the content of the question. I would like to have the option to add a row in the rubric, blah, 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 blah. And they give you know an example of what they're talking about. And then you scroll down a bit and we see that there's 48 comments of different Canvas users proposing uh, questions or solutions regarding the original poster's uh, question. And a lot of times people will link to um, other resources, oftentimes guides, and you'll find um, it's a pretty active community and a pretty helpful community. And you're more than welcome to post your questions in there if you can't find solutions in the um, the uh, the Canvas guides. <clears throat> All right, so I talked about the Canvas help menu for students. Um, next, I wanna go over the help menu um, for instructors. Now, both students and instructors, I believe, uh, see the same help menu, but some of the links are applicable to just one or the other. So I'll go back to the help menu. And the very first thing on the help menu is a link to the Canvas guides. So you can simply Google, you know, instructor Canvas guides and find a link to them, or you can go to the help menu and uh, click the top link and then it'll take you to it as well. So it takes you to the Canvas guide page. 
uh, and you say, you know, I want Canvas guides, and then you choose which type of guides. Uh, we want the instructor guide, and then it will take you to the um, table of contents. And we see for the instructor guide, this is the table of contents, all sorts of different topics covered. And then as you scroll down, you see individual guides. And again, just tons of content. And if you want to see what a, um, a guide looks like, I'll show you an example of one. So well, this there's is, a lot of stuff there. I, I, I think it's definitely as, as uh, comprehensive as a student guide. Yeah, probably. Um, I wasn't sure how they compared, to be honest with you, but it is pretty comprehensive, like you said. <clears throat> so this is a guide on how do I create an essay question in new quizzes. And then you can see the, the format is usually some text and some screenshots. So you can see what it would look like uh, from the instructor side as you're completing the steps. And you go through and it gives you all the different um, information. Sometimes there will be uh, user comments at the end of a guide. This one doesn't have any, but sometimes there'll be comments for clarification or for providing some additional information. Um, and then at the bottom, you can choose to go to the next topic or previous topic or go back to the quizzes section or go back to the table of contents for the guide. So very useful tools. I use them all the time because there's so much um, different information that you need to know about Canvas that it's you know impossible to, well, next to impossible to remember everything off the top of your head. So I will often reference guides as I'm troubleshooting instructor questions. So very useful tool and I strongly recommend you make use of them. Uh, the next uh, link in the help menu for instructors is the cross list request. So if you're familiar with um, Moodle meta courses, uh, cross listed courses are exactly the same. It's just a different term. Canvas calls it cross list instead of meta. Uh, what it is, is if you have multiple sections of the same course, you can have those courses combined into one course shell so that as an instructor, you only have to access the one course to work with all of the individual sections. Um, it just saves you some time and effort from having to navigate to the different courses, and make changes to due dates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, helps you work a lot more efficiently. Not every instructor wants to have uh, sections combined into a cross-listed course, and that's fine. You certainly do not have to. But if you do, this will take you to a request form where you provide some information, and then that uh, information will make its way to the Faculty Success Center and Molly or myself will complete the cross list request and we'll contact you when it's done. Um, we've been unfortunately lagging a little bit behind until just today I did a bunch of the requests uh, just because we're so busy doing other things, um, but we will get to them at some point. You may, uh, unfortunately the squeaky wheel does get the grease. So if you email me, you know, uh, once every day saying when's my cross listing gonna be done, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll probably put you at the top of the line just to make you leave me alone. <laughs> um, but generally speaking, we get it done in a week or two. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer um, because we're so busy, but um, you know, I'll always make sure it gets done before the, the start of the semester at the very least. Um, and David, then, may I ask a question? Yes, certainly. Um, how does that work, the cross list? Um, because are they actually combined into one course with all the modules and everything the same, but it has the names of uh, the CRNs for all courses? And if so, where are all the students? Are they all in the same course? Yes. List? Yeah. So that's exactly how it works. Um, the students will only be able to see the students in their course section. But on your side, from your point of view as the instructor, you will see um, all the students from all the sections and you can um, filter. And so by default, I believe the view is to show all students for all sections in the course, but you can filter and, by section. If you wanna look at the grade book and only wanna see you know, one specific section, there's a filter feature where you can choose that specific section and then you will only see that group and you can change between the different sections as well as all sections. 
in your view when you um, manipulate the course. You can also um, like assign uh, different due dates by section, even though you're in the one course. Um, when you're making the due date, you can choose you know, which section you're applying it to. And if you want the same due date for all of your students, then you can make it all. But if you only want it to apply to a specific section, then you can choose that as well. So uh, Canvas understands that sometimes you're going to want to um, have different uh, settings and requirements for different sections, even when you're using a uh, cross-listed course. Um, so they, they allow for that uh, functionality to be available to you. Okay, so what I've been doing, which is probably uh, was not a good idea, <laughs> as I'm developing one course, I have been exporting it and then importing it into the other two courses that are identical. I didn't need to do that. Is that right? You don't have to do that. If you want to use a cross-listed course, um, then you can uh, just develop content for one course, and then we can make that the parent course, um, which is the course that we'll actually use. And then all students will reach that course, and you can just use that one course shell itself. Um, again, you certainly do not have to do cross-listing. A lot of instructors like it. Uh, to find that it makes their life easier, but it's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not. Okay, that's it sounds like a big time saver, so I've already wasted a lot of time. But on the syllabus part that I put in uh, the first course, first section I did, it has that CRN. Do I put all the CRNs in the syllabus on one course if I'm going to cross list it? Yeah, so you could add all the CRNs or you could just remove the CRNs. Um, either way, um, what I do when I create the cross-listed parent course is I use an actual course section um, with a CRN for the parent course. And what I do is I rename it to remove that course registration number uh, so that students from the other course sections aren't confused. I just give it the title of, you know, Math 160, uh, dash instructor dash fall 20 as the title um, and you can do that similar kind of thing for the syllabus just take out the CRNs so it, it, it doesn't confuse anyone or like you said you can add the other CRNs okay um, all right I'll save my other questions for later because it's gonna take up too much time thank you okay yep and I'm happy to stay around after the presentations done to um, help you however I can okay thanks Like students, you can report a, a problem to IT. Um, your problems go to Molly and myself. Um, you're welcome to use the ticket system. You're also welcome to email us. If you are going to use the ticket system and you are having trouble just within a specific class and not Canvas wide, then try to make your ticket while you're in that class because there is going to be some metadata that is included that we can find useful. Um, Whereas if it's, you know, about a specific class and you're on your dashboard and you submit your ticket, it's not going to have all the data uh, that it would have if you were within that class. Um, and no big deal if you forget this. Um, we'll get, you know, to the root of the problem one way or another. It can just give us a little bit more additional information when you submit your ticket if you do it from the class that you're having the problem in. If it is a Canvas-wide issue and not, you know, related to a specific class, then you can report your ticket from whichever class or the dashboard, wherever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, a link to instructor guides. This is just another link to the guides. This should take you directly to instructor guides. That first link, yeah, there we go. That first link can be used by students as well to reach the guides, which is why it doesn't take you directly to the uh, instructor guides. It takes you to a page where you can choose um, what you're looking for, your Canvas guides, and then student or instructor. If you don't want to go through those extra clicks, then don't use this first link. Instead, use the instructor guides link, and that'll take you directly to the instructor guides. Uh, you may find use to ask a librarian. I don't know. They know lots of stuff and are pretty helpful, uh, but generally that's for students. Ask the community. That will take you to the location where you can uh, develop a community question. Uh, such as I showed you earlier, and the uh, Canvas users can respond to you. Um, submit a feature idea. Canvas allows users to submit 
uh, feature ideas, things that uh, people would like to see Canvas be able to do that it can't currently. And you submit your feature idea and then the Canvas community will vote on all the different submitted ideas and the very top point getting um, ideas will be implemented by Canvas. Um, you kind of have to rally people to your cause if it's something that you really want to see, you really want to ensure Canvas implements, you kind of have to use the community to get people to vote for it. And it might be more um, time and effort than you really want to dedicate toward it. But if you have something that you really need the Canvas people to develop, um, then you can submit your feature idea and try to get people to vote for it. And then we have the training services portal. This is a link to um, Canvas training services that were developed by Canvas itself, different videos and documents, um, a lot more videos. The guides, the Canvas guides are super useful, but they're not videos, that, you know, they're text documents. Um, these uh, training service portal, uh, the resources here are a lot more videos. Um, and then some COVID-19 Canvas resources that I actually have not really explored because it's pretty new. Um, you're welcome to, I'm not going to take the time to figure out exactly what this is now, um, but you're welcome to take a look at it and see if it's got anything that's useful for you. Uh, as a Canvas administrator, I have the ability to customize the help menu to add different um, links and remove different links. Uh, myself, Molly, and then a few members of IT have that ability. Um, so you may occasionally see the help menu change either with new um, links or um, if something is no longer um, relevant, uh, we'll delete it from the help menu as well. And usually when we add new things, we will put the uh, little new uh, label next to them just to kind of call out, call attention to it so that everyone knows, hey, this is a new thing. Take a look and see if it's something that you need to use. So that is the help menu. Oh, there's actually one other really cool um, help tool within a Canvas course. Um, so when you are in a Canvas course, and I'll just use my grade book example class, uh, on many of the different areas within the Canvas course, there's going to be this icon uh, an arrow pointing left with a line next to it. When you click on that, it pops out a little window and it gives you relevant information for what area area you're on in the course. So I'm on the home page. And so this says, you know, it's a home page, it's a place for you to welcome your students, give you some uh, information about the home page. And then what's really handy is it links to guides relating to the home page. So instead of searching through all of the guides uh, on the guides page, uh, index page um, from within a Canvas course, I can use this to reach some of the guides rel relative to uh, the page I'm at. So here it is for home. If I went to the assignments page by clicking on the assignments link, you'll see that icon is there. I click on that and it gives me some information about the assignments page as well as links that are related to the assignments page. Same thing if I go to files, or rubrics. So know that this is here and what it can, um, what kind of information it can provide and how it can be helpful for you. I think it's a really neat tool to have and I'm glad that Canvas has it and I recommend you make use of it um, as needed. So the good news about Canvas is it should not go down. It should not um, fail as often as Moodle did for us. However, as with all websites, there are going to be occasions where um, the site or aspects of it um, uh, go down and are inaccessible for a length of time. Um, and one common situation is that, uh, that online instructors face is figuring out how to handle students that say they're in the middle of taking a test, for example, and then Canvas died on them, or they were going to submit their homework on time but Canvas was down, and so that's why their homework's late. And of course, um, you never know for sure if the student's telling the truth or not. 
Uh, however, you can kind of figure out, um, you know, you have a good chance of figuring out whether or not the student's telling the truth because Canvas has a, a couple of status checking tools. So there are two. One is just statusinstructure.com, which is this tool here that I'm, sh uh, that I'm showing. Um, this will give you the current status, which right now all systems operational, it's green, it's got a check mark, like uh, when something's published in Canvas, so you know it's good to go. And then it also gives you um, the uh, ability to kind of um, hone in on different areas. So if I click on the little plus sign next to Canvas, it expands a menu and it shows me the different um, areas of Canvas, such as the chat or the comments or notifications, uh, or different areas of Canvas. And then it tells me whether or not these individual areas are operational or not. And so you can kind of narrow in and see if Canvas is acting up. And then it, what's really handy is it gives you a log of past uh, issues. It'll give you the date and it'll tell you what the issue was, um, when the issue was resolved, and then it gives you the time as well as the date. So if a student says, you know, they tried to submit their homework uh, this past Friday at 9 p.m., uh, but Canvas was down, then you can go to this website and you can see, okay, at, you know, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., this portion of Canvas was down. The student is telling the truth. And I'm totally not going to mark off any points for being late because it wasn't their fault. Canvas was down. So that's just a, a neat tool that you can use. And also, if you're trying to access Canvas and something's going wrong and you don't know if it's something to do with your computer or internet or if it's Canvas, you can go to status.instructor.com. And if uh, this says that Canvas is operational, then something else is the problem. Something uh, else is going wrong on your side and it's not Canvas. Then we also have the statushistory.instructure.com and we can uh, get this filtered to the um, Canvas cluster for our area. So uh, this gets it for like kalamazoo.instructure.com specifically, uh, rather than that last page we were on that was for Canvas wide. Uh, this is for our instance of Canvas. And again, we can see, um, so right now the overall up rate for Canvas is 99.99%, which is what we would expect for a software of Canvas's size. And we can see mostly green stuff. There is a little tiny little bit of red, um, a couple of different places, uh, but by and large, Canvas has been very reliable for us. And again, you can scroll down and see some of the areas in Canvas. David, can we all see that? I believe so. I went to the website and it's asking me to enter your Canvas host. Uh, it should just be kalamazoo.instructor.com, I believe. Let me put a link in the chat and see if it works. Not Canvas. Uh, not Kalamazoo. Whatever. Try the link that I put in the chat and see if that works for you. I could be mistaken. This might just be a tool that I can access because I have different uh, privileges than instructors. I hope not. It's handy. Are you talking about the window that you just put up? I have it. So yeah, when I click that link, it does work. But okay. when I typed statushistory.instructure.com, it asked me for a what am a jigger? Okay. Yeah, so you're welcome to bookmark this page. So I you think I will. Remember it. Um, so we did find one, uh, the Google Drive LTI part, which you have no reason to know what that is, but just to show you um, on May, I don't know, 16th maybe. Um, it was down for a while. Basically, it didn't go down during all the storms the past few weeks. Nope. Which is nice. So new quizzes might be an area that you're interested in. If, you know, a student says they're in the middle of the quiz and then they got kicked out of Canvas and couldn't get back in, then you can check the new quizzes if you're using new quizzes 
and see if Canvas was down at all during that date. Uh, and if it was, then you know it wasn't the student's fault. And if it wasn't, then you know either something went wrong on the student side that didn't have anything to do with Canvas or they're fibbing, fibbing to you. Uh, so just a handy tool that you might want to make use of um, if you think it'll be useful for you. So only a couple more slides, and I know that we're getting close to being out of time, so I'll, I'll try to move quickly. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to stay after uh, three o'clock and answer questions, or after the presentation's done and answer questions. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is a little bit of um, uh, guidance on how you can get the best uh, results from your help requests, whether you're submitting a ticket or contacting Molly or myself uh, directly. Um, there are some things that you can do on your side that can really help Molly and I um, help you more efficiently. Uh, the first thing that I recommend is please don't use vague language. Don't say something like, don't say something like Canvas is acting up um, I'm, when I try to change my quiz uh, or Canvas is acting weird for a student when they try to submit uh, an assignment um, that's too vague. Uh, it's going to be a lot more useful for me if you give me specifics. So if you tell me, you know, the specific course, the student in question, the assignment in question, and more detail on what exactly is going on, that's going to save me a lot of time um, from having to try to figure that stuff out. Um, and most likely, I won't even do that. I'll just email you back and say, hey, I need you know, additional information, and then I'll wait for you to respond before I start trying to troubleshoot your problem. If you give me all the information I could ever want uh, from the start, then I'm gonna be able to get you your uh, answer and help you a lot more quickly. On a related note, if you happen to be um, running into error messages, if you click on a link and it pops up an error message and it won't open the window for you, uh, if you can get that error message to us, that's gonna be very useful. Sometimes we will use information and that error message in our troubleshooting. Um, so if you can copy and paste the error message, that's great. Sometimes you won't be able to copy and paste the text, um, but if you know how to do a screenshot, you can do a, a screenshot of it and include that in your ticket or your email to us. And it's gonna help us work more efficiently to solve your problem, which will give you a, a a good result in a, a quicker um, manner. And I already mentioned about giving me specifics. And I don't want you to feel like, if you're ever wondering, is this something that I need to include with my ticket? Just default to yes. Um, I can always ignore information that isn't helpful, but I can never magic up information that you don't include. So always default to more is better. More information is better. And don't worry, I'm never going to be upset if you give me too much information. Like I said, I'll just ignore the stuff I don't need. Um, it's it's going to be a lot better for me and a lot better for you uh, if you give me more information. Uh, finally, uh, lastly, I'll talk about some other Canvas resources. As I have mentioned earlier, um, and we mentioned in all of our workshops, the Faculty Success Center has a YouTube channel. You can simply go to YouTube and um, search KBCC uh, FSC. Oh, well, I guess I should start at the very beginning. If you're not aware, um, YouTube is a website that people share videos, and the Faculty Success Center is sharing all of our different videos uh, for Canvas and Moodle and Zoom and Panopto and Camtasia and our workshops. Uh, on our own um, specific channel in YouTube. And if you were to Google FSC KBCC, you will see the KBCC Faculty Success Center, and you can subscribe to it if you're signed into an account, uh, a YouTube account or a Google account, I believe works. And if you subscribe, then you can get notifications when we add uh, new videos, for example. And when you go into it, um, this is the home page, and you can go to the videos tab and see all the different videos that we have. Or we've created a playlist where we have broken our videos up into different topics. So Canvas, for example, live workshops, um, video lecture and web conferencing tools, assessment and proctoring, Moodle, um, various videos for various uh, areas. 
and um and then you know just watch the video and you can watch as many times as you need um you can use the tools that um youtube provides such as um subtitles or changing the playback speed if you want to get through my you know hour long zoom uh workshop in a much uh quicker time frame you can watch it at one and a half speed and you'll be amazed how quickly you'll be able to get used to listening to things at one and a half speed it starts off where it seems overwhelming and moving too fast and then very quickly your brain catches up and um it just seems normal to you uh, so make use of our youtube channel and then uh, mary Kay pobosic is our uh guru for quizzes and exams. Uh, she can help with developing and uploading quizzes and exams and pretty much anything that has to do with uh, that area. You can feel free to um, use her assistance and she's very helpful and always happy to help. And uh, I often refer people to her when they have questions about quizzes and exams. And then uh, her partner in crime, oh, that says Mark, doesn't it? Uh, her name is Mary Kay, not Mark Kay. Uh, that is a typo. And I apologize to Mary Kay. Um, and then there's Mary Morehouse, who is kind of Mary Kay's partner in crime. Mary Morehouse handles evaluation kit. So evaluation kit is a new tool, I think last semester, maybe summer, summer or winter, I can't remember, uh, was the first semester that we used it. It is the tool that we use now for student course evaluations. If you have questions or problems when you're trying to do that at the end of the term, please feel free to contact Mary Morehouse for assistance with that. And then lastly, I want to address something that um, I can't remember who now, one of, uh, one of you brought up, which is the um, orientation course, Canvas orientation course for instructors. It is called Growing with Canvas, and it's a self-paced course. There are quizzes that are graded, but no one like is gonna check your grade or anything. Um, and you don't have to, you know, have it completed by a certain date or anything. It's entirely self-paced, but there's lots of good content in there um, that we do encourage you to uh, go through and peruse. You can go through all of it or just certain topics. If you're comfortable on, you know, creating quizzes, then you don't have to go through that section but you want help with gray book, then go through the gray book section. You know, you use it entirely at your, um, uh, as you desire. And my uh, notes that I'm going to um, email everyone in attendance has uh, the link to the uh, Growing with Canvas course. So like the student orientation course it is a self-enrolled course. As long as you have the link to the course, you will be enrolled in it. So I will email you my document with the link. You put that link in your web browser and then um, you'll be able to enroll in that course and um, use it as you desire. And somehow, Somehow I finished like right on time. This is a miracle. Uh, so now I will just leave um, the rest of the time for questions.